Flying Bear Laser. Did an assembly video on it here a few days ago. It's sitting here in front of me. What I'm going to do today is to put it on a baseboard with some feet and burn a layout grid on it. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I mentioned, I have this Flying Bear Laser Man laser here. Want to make a baseboard for and mount it to the baseboard and put a layout grid on it. Make it a little bit easier to lay out my projects. I'm going to be using half inch MDF. Got a piece right here. It's 24 inches square and it's that size because that's what I had left over from the last one I did. So and it just happened to work out pretty good. And I'll be mounting the laser to this board using these 3D printed feet which are not designed for this laser but they're going to work. I'll get you in close up here and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Okay, and using a piece this size there's not a whole lot of wiggle room because it is just 24 inches from end to end here uh, on the Y axis. Uh, width wise I got plenty here of course the air filler is going to hang over the end and the uh, control box in the front will hang over the front. That's fine. I just wanted to have something to put the uh, burn the grid on my layout. So I have come over two and a half inches on this side which leaves me about two and a half inches on the other side and that makes the uh, drag chain and the track stay on the board here. So how am I going to fasten this down? These here are for some other laser and I don't remember what. But I made a bunch of these on the 3D printer. They fit all types of lasers so it, you're not restricted to just one brand. So what I'm going to be doing is mounting them like this. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. That way I can lift the laser off anytime I want to. And when I put it back, it's going to be in exactly the same place again. So I need to gather up some screws and get a cordless drill going here. Okay, I'm using a number four screw. And with the oop, drop that one. Guess I didn't want that one. Of course, you don't want to overdrive these, you'll break the plastic. And you're not trying to hold a space shuttle in place. And I'll do all the outside ones and then go back and do the inside ones because I don't think, well, I might be able to get this inside one here. No, nope, not straight. This side will be just a little trickier because I have a lot of obstacles here, but once I get a screw set, will be good to go. And once I have that many screws then I can just lift this up then and put the rest in. Okay and then once all the screws are in I, it's just a matter of setting this right back down in place. Make sure I'm down all the way, all the way around, and that's good and solid, and it won't move. Okay, a little tip if you're using MDF uh, rather than plywood, or even if you're using plywood, um, and you happen to have a router or a router table, I used a quarter-inch roundover bed and went all the way around the edges on both sides, especially with MDF because it's very prone to chipping and flaking, and this stops it. Well, sort of stops it. If you go banging it into things, it's still going to chip, but it won't chip as easily. So now I, what I need to do is get this laid out for my grid. And for a grid, I'm going to be using a grid that was already made by someone from, uh, it's called Buster Beagle 3D. He has the file on Thingiverse. It is designed for the Ortur LaserMaster 2 Pro. And I have one of those. But it happens to be 400 millimeter square layout grid. And that will work out perfect here because it fits on there. I hope. We'll frame that and find out. Uh, the G-code can be downloaded from Thingiverse, and I'll put a link in the description on uh, where to get it. And one of the things I'm going to need to do here, of course, is frame this and make sure. And you, could, you have to run this from Laser Gerbil. Uh, you could convert it to run it off of the touchscreen, 
but you're going to have to use that MK whatever it is software to convert that G code to what this will read. I can do it directly from Laser Gerbil and it'll just make the grid. It's rather long and grave but it, it does an excellent job and if it doesn't come out dark enough the first time you can run it again and darken it up. So I'll bring you around here uh, on the computer screen so you can see what I'm doing. Okay this here is what the file looks like. Uh, this is opened up in Laser Gerbil. I, laser isn't on, I'm not connected yet, but I do have the file loaded so you can kind of see what it looks like. So I'll turn the laser on here. Yes, it beeps like that when it starts up. That's normal. And I'll go up here to connect. And when you connect, it'll go through its little beeping thing again and kind of reboots the touch screen. That's also normal. Okay, so what I need to do now is frame this, and I'm going to zoom you around so you can watch it frame. It is kind of a slow framing process, but it, that way you're assured of being accurate. I'm going to just click on frame here in Laser Gerbil, and I've not focused this yet. I, I've left that up high for on purpose. I'll focus it here before we get going on the uh, actual engrave. But by having way up in the air like that, it lets me kind of follow that dot. You can also follow the process of that in Laser Gerbil if you watch that little blue cursor. Right now it's moving down the right hand side. That's showing the laser head position. Okay, now to set focus here, we're going to be engraving right on the base here. That's where I need to set my focus distance. I'll lay my focus plate down. I could have moved the laser out to do this too, I suppose. But you want it right down on the focus plate. A little thumb screw back up. So now we are focused. We've done the homing. Or we've done the framing. I'm going to home this again just to make sure I didn't move anything. And we'll start it. Total engrave time on this is roughly an hour, and I'm obviously not going to let the camera run for the whole hour, but I'll uh, update you here from time to time. Looks like we're getting some nice dark lines. So how long did that take? 57 minutes and 21 seconds. That was a total engraved time. 
and I have a nice layout grid here. It makes it a little easier to uh, place objects on there, have them square, and as I may have mentioned in my other videos, well, I'm sure I have, I like to use absolute coordinates. I like to start from center with my engraves. I use light burn 99.5% of the time. So everything I do in light burn, again, usually absolute coordinates, and I start from center. And this makes it extremely easy to get my project laid out. Uh, this is not an expensive project to do. A piece of MDF two foot square and you can download this file for free from Thingiverse. If you happen to have a 3D printer, you could print these little feet. Or you could use little metal L brackets and screws and nuts and bolts too. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting the thumbs up. Always helps the channel. William Roger in the shop. Layout Grid. Laser Man from Flying Bear. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.